In the annals of history, a momentous event unfolded in the crisp October air of 1961 when the Soviet Union unleashed a cataclysmic force that would shake the very foundations of our understanding of destructive power. This was the birth of the Tsar Bomba, a behemoth of annihilation equivalent to a staggering 58 megatons of TNT, dwarfing all previous man-made explosions. This monstrous creation wreaked havoc over an astounding 160 kilometers away, and the flash it unleashed was so bright, it could be seen from an astonishing 1,000 kilometers away. This, folks, was the granddaddy of all nukes, the Tsar Bomba. But rewind a bit back to World War II, when things took a turn for the terrifying. That's when the United States dropped two atomic bombs on Japanese cities, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. These were the first ever nuclear weapons used in warfare, and they caused unspeakable devastation. The initial blasts claimed tens of thousands of lives, and many more suffered from radiation sickness later on. It was a wake-up call for the world, a stark reminder of the sheer terror and destruction these atomic monsters could bring. When the United States used nuclear bombs, it made other countries, like the Soviet Union, worry about their safety. They didn't want to be defenseless against these powerful weapons, so they started making their own nuclear bombs. This competition to build more and bigger bombs is what led to the Tsar Bomba, a force so large that it could turn entire cities into ash with a single blinding flash. Now let's dive deeper into the Tsar Bomba's colossal construction. Picture an 8 meter long, nearly 2.6 meter wide, and over 27 ton heavy mammoth. That's like the weight of five elephants. Inside this beast lay a nightmarish setup. At the tippy top, you had a small atomic bomb, round like a soccer ball, on the casing's crown. This bomb packed conventional explosives surrounding a sphere made of beryllium mirror casing, hiding a tiny plutonium core about four to six inches wide. Below that, nestled in the heart of the beast, was the hydrogen or fusion bomb. Think of it as a uranium cylinder packed with lithium deuteride the stuff needed for a fusion reaction. In the middle of this cylinder sat a core of plutonium, and guess what kept the fission and fusion from mixing too soon? Styrofoam. Yep, plain old styrofoam. Now, delivering this monstrosity wasn't a simple task. They had to soup up a 295 V-bomber, a plane so big that the bomb couldn't fit inside. So, they strapped it outside the aircraft, painted the plane a bright, blinding white to soften the blow of the megaflash, and sent Andrew Dernovsev up to pilot it. The mission took off from the Kola Peninsula, and they even brought along an observer plane to measure the bomb's impact at around 11.32 a.m. Moscow time. They dropped the Tsar Bomba over the Mityushika Bay test site on the remote island of Novaya Zemlya. And here's the cool part. The bomb had a special parachute to slow its descent, giving the plane enough time to fly far, far away from the impending explosion. Safety first, even when dealing with the biggest, baddest bomb in history. Barometric sensors played a crucial role in setting up the Tsar Bomba's terrifying detonation, suspending it in the sky at a chilling height of four kilometers above the ground. Picture these sensors as the bomb's watchful guardians, keeping a close eye on its altitude. When the time came, 32 tiny bridge wire detonators stepped into action, sending an electric spark to ignite the chemical bomb inside. Now, here's where the real chain reaction of doom began. The chemical bomb's explosion set off a domino effect, starting with the compression of the plutonium at its core. This intense pressure led to bursts of tiny particles called neutrons. Imagine these neutrons as the instigators, stirring up trouble inside the plutonium. One solitary neutron would collide with a plutonium atom, causing it to split into two and releasing a surge of energy. This energy, in turn, spawned two or three more pesky neutrons. These newfound neutrons weren't content to sit still. They went on a mission to slam into other unsuspecting plutonium atoms, setting off a relentless chain reaction. The result? A mind-bogglingly scorching heat, hotter than even the sun's heart, sizzling at 100 million degrees Celsius. To put that in perspective, 
The sun's core is a mere 15 million degrees Celsius. This searing temperature released an atomic explosion of epic proportions. The explosion brought forth high-energy gamma rays and X-rays, turning the innocent styrofoam surrounding the bomb into a searing plasma, like the fiery breath of a dragon. This super-hot and super-pressurized plasma squeezed the fusion cylinder, making the lithium deuteride inside it react. As if that wasn't enough chaos, the neutrons, ever the troublemakers, stirred up the uranium casing and plutonium rod, causing more fission reactions. This, in turn, exerted more pressure on the lithium deuteride, making it undergo even more fusion. And the cycle continued relentlessly. This wild back-and-forth dance of fission and fusion reactions unraveled a monstrous explosion that tore everything asunder. Shockingly, all these mind-blowing events unfolded in the blink of an eye in just 600 billionths of a second. What followed was a nightmarish mushroom cloud soaring more than 60 kilometers into the sky. The aftermath was no less gruesome, with buildings more than 160 kilometers away bearing the scars of the explosion. The heat emanating from the blast was so ferocious that it could inflict third-degree burns up to 100 kilometers away. The Tsar Bomba, despite its immense destructive potential, was never meant for actual combat use. Instead, it was like a giant, terrifying billboard on the global stage during the Cold War. By detonating this colossal bomb, the Soviet Union achieved a few important goals. Firstly, they sent a spine-tingling message to the world. Look at what we can do. This demonstration of nuclear might was meant to deter any thought of military aggression from other countries, especially the United States and its allies. It was a way of saying, we have this unbelievably powerful weapon, so let's not even think about going to war. Secondly, it was a strategic move in the global chess game of diplomacy. The USR could use the Tsar Bomba as leverage in negotiations and discussions with the West. It was a constant reminder that the Cold War rivals needed to find ways to coexist without using this kind of devastating power. The Tsar Bomba was like a scary warning sign, telling the world to step back from the brink of nuclear conflict. It was a way for the Soviet Union to flex its nuclear muscles and make everyone think twice about the catastrophic consequences of any potential war. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell to stay tuned for more such videos. Thanks for joining us, and we'll catch you next time.